Okay, I have a question here. It's from Adi or Addy. Forgive me if I'm not getting your name quite right. The question runs thus. Hi James, just looking for some general advice on how to effectively get better in NLP. I started seeing clients for free and I was wondering if you could direct me to any source about using NLP for therapy. Okay, so um, there's, there's a couple of points to this. There's general advice on how to effectively get better and there are some sources uh, in using NLP for therapy. So let's look at both of these. First of all, I'm gonna say, if you're interested in doing NLP for therapy, the fact that you're seeing clients and initially doing this for free, that is an excellent move. I highly endorse that. That's how I started out, seeing clients for, for free. I needed it for three months, but I saw as many clients as I could in that time. Uh, because ultimately, everything is theoretical until it becomes practical, and it only becomes practical when you're doing it. You're only gonna have the right, you know, the really smart questions are only gonna arise in your mind as a result of engaging with, with real practice, so to speak. Otherwise, you're just in the realms of the abstract and the theoretical. So top marks for getting out there and starting to see the clients. Now, when I started out in NLP, the first thing, the first thing I'll share with you here is that I made a commitment to myself, a commitment to learn the material as thoroughly and as deeply as I could. So this wasn't an interest. This wasn't, oh yeah, NLP, yeah, maybe. That's got some cool stuff in there. I made a commitment. And what I did is I broke NLP down into separate skill sets. And I, I made up a kind of a spreadsheet with all of these separate skill sets lifted, listed down the side. And I rated myself. This is after my initial training. I rated myself uh, on a scale of one to 10 with each of these skill sets. And then I chose pairs, mostly two or three at a time, skill sets to really work on for short periods of time, maybe a week or two. And I would generally choose the things I was weakest on, sometimes the things I just had the most interest in developing, but I was always looking at breaking it down and working through the skill sets in a very methodical kind of manner and looking for every opportunity to practice them. So I would practice, of course, with the clients that I was seeing. As I mentioned, like you, I was seeing clients for free initially. I would also look for every opportunity in the world to practice certain skill sets. So I had uh, a job at the time, a real job in an office and all of that kind of thing. I was working uh, in project management. So I had lots of opportunities to utilize the skills and practice the particular skills I'd chosen to work on at that time within the real world. So that's one thing I would recommend doing, breaking it down, make a commitment to really learning the skills deeply, break the skills down, work on them small chunk at a time. So there's my, my first recommendation on getting better. Ultimately, as always, it is the time you spend practicing that is gonna yield results in terms of skill. The more time, the more focus you put on practicing, the more quickly you will achieve high levels of skill. So, change work. Now, NLP is full of wonderful tools. It's full of, uh, it's, it's got a rich range of tools and ideas and concepts that you can bring to bear. But I don't think that generally it really teaches you much about how to structure um, a client session. I've told this story before. My first client session was an absolute disaster. I spoke to the guy on the phone. He said he wanted to stop smoking. I sat down, I thought about all the, the techniques that I could use, and I picked some I was going to use. He came in, I said, so what is it that you would like to work on then? Already knowing it was smoking, but just going through the motions, he said, oh, I don't know, despair, bleakness, hatred of self, hatred of mankind, and this just huge abyss of depression opened up. And frankly, I did not know what to do. I didn't know... Um, I had no criteria by which to make good choices. I had a bunch of techniques and a bunch of tools and a bunch of ideas, but I had no criteria by which to make choices. Why? Because I didn't really understand human beings and change on that deeper level. NLP's done a fantastic job on modeling out a lot of tools, but as Ericsson famously, allegedly said, they took the shell but left the nut. That's a great shell, it's important. Every nut needs a shell in order to carry it to its, um, to its uh, the completion of its potential, so to speak. So NLP is fantastic from that perspective. But you wanna go a bit deeper, maybe get outside the box. For me, the realization was after that first session is I would need what I call a framework for change work. 
a way of understanding what I was doing in the session and a way of structuring it. And I vowed that I would build such a thing after that first session because I never wanted to be caught in that situation again. And I went about doing it. So I did a lot of reading, a lot of research, and I ultimately, um, and a lot of actual working with clients, and ultimately built and refined and evolved, and it's continued to, continuing to evolve, a way of working with clients. So um, I also have some books here. Now, if I could turn the camera around, I would show you my bookcases here. You will see literally hundreds of books. Some of them I read all the way through, some of them I've read part way through, some of them I haven't got around to reading at all yet. But I have and continue to consume a lot of ideas and different source material. I'm gonna share with you a very small selection here of books that have made a real difference to me um, over my time doing change work. Most of these books are from early in that phase, one or two from later on. Most of them are early books that really made a difference to me. The first book I'm gonna share with you is, is Change, Problem, Formation, and Problem Resolution by Paul Vatslavic and Richard Fish and John Weakland. This book really helped me to understand change, really helped me to understand, give me a sense of what I was really trying to do with all of these tools and techniques that I'd learned from NLP, you see, because that was the thing that was kind of missing, a sort of theoretical underpinning. Uh, NLP just had this idea of reprogramming, but it's a little bit unspecific. What exactly are you trying to do? Maybe just shift some submodalities. What does it do? How does it work? This really helped me to understand change at a deeper level, and instantly I started to get more creative and more effective in the work that I did uh, pretty much as soon as I read this. There's some good follow-up books to this as well. I'm not sharing them here, but there's some excellent follow-ups like The Tactics of Change and also another one which is about using this concept um, with difficult cases. Just another point, this, there's an overlap here with NLP in that these people worked closely with Gregory Bateson and they were modeling a lot of the same people that Bandler and Grinder and, and their team were modeling as well. So there's an excellent overlap. So it's looking at the same kind of material as NLP was looking at, but coming at it from a different perspective, which is really useful. Um, Another book, early book for me, which really helped me out was Monsters and Magical Sticks. Monsters and Magical Sticks. This is an excellent look at some basic NLP ideas, the, um, the anchoring patterns, the overlapping patterns, this kind of thing. And looking at using some of the simple stuff in very artful, creative ways to get difference with people. So this is Stephen Heller's book, Monsters and Magical Sticks. Absolute top recommendation really worth checking out. So there's that one. I've got these two books here because I just think they're really good. Both of them, there's Change Your Mind here, Change Your Mind and Keep the Change, Stephen Connie Ray Andreas, excellent, and Heart of the Mind, Stephen Connie Ray Andreas. I think this is the first book, this is the follow-up. So many good, useful ideas about doing change work with people, uh, little bits of case study, transcripts, this sort of thing. Both really good books, well worth checking out. The Rainbow Machine by Andrew T. Austin. The Rainbow Machine is, is excellent. It's a real good look at the creative application of NLP, some hypnosis stuff as well. Um, I'm aware you're in Israel, um, Addy or AD, and they've got some rules there around hypnosis. Hypnosis is just a label. Take the label off, there's a whole bunch of tools you can use here. Andrew T. Austin's book here will give you a load of really interesting, really readable case studies that will get you thinking creatively about change. Another book that's excellent in that vein, I've only, I got this book a few years ago when I first um, met Jürgen Rasmussen, who is, I'm gonna say Jürgen is one of the most creative thinkers in change work that I know. He comes from a an NLP and hypnosis background, but is completely open to drawing from any source. And he's a real experimenter, a guy that, that suspends any prejudgment about things, goes and checks things out, finds out for himself. This book is full of excellent case studies that will, again, inform you as to creative ways you can approach change work. My point before was around having a framework 
for change work, a framework for change work. So what I'm going to recommend for that is Richard Volstad's Resolve model. Okay, This is a, a pretty good book in that it gives you exactly that, a framework for change work, how to approach, how to structure change work sessions with NLP. Uh, I'm not saying this is the method that I use, the approach that I use. Obviously, I have my own approach, my own way of doing things, much of which is outlined and create instant change. But in absence of that, this will assist you. This will help you out. Now, one last thing I'm going to say here. There's no right way of doing this. Ultimately, you need to go out there, engage with different information sources and build your own approach. The last piece of advice that I'm going to give you, which you can take or you can leave or you can do whatever you want with, is I'm going to make an offer to you. And the offer is this. I recommend you choose now. You make a commitment now to becoming world class at doing what you do. Not a lot of people do this, but it will pay dividends if you do. What if you were to do that? How would it be if you were to choose now to become world class at doing change work with NLP and you went all out there full throttle, you found the people that you wanted to find to mentor you, you did reading, you did research, you switched on your critical thinking, you switched on your creative thinking, you experimented with things, you recorded the results, you just kept on in there, hanging on in there, progressing, evolving towards being truly world class at what you do. How would it be if you were to do that, if you were to choose to do that now and make a commitment to do that? You could develop yourself in incredible ways. I know that because you're a human being and you have the capacity to do it. So get on there and do it. That's my recommendation. The last offer I'm going to make, and I'm going to make this as an open offer to anybody that's watching this. Um, if you, as you're watching this, you're interested in developing yourself as a change worker with hypnosis or with NLP or with other allied brain wrangling techniques, and if you're starting out and you are in that place where so many people are, you're feeling a little bit lost, you're not quite sure which things are the things that are going to work best for you, which skills to, um, to focus on developing first. If you're in that place and you're looking for some guidance with that, I'm going to offer two short mentoring programs, two short three-session mentoring programs, super laser-focused, super personalized to you. These will go to the first two people that contact me about this, and I'm going to offer them a, a, a a slightly discounted price from what I would normally do around my session rate. So that's two opportunities for two people, first two people that contact me, to get a short three-part mentoring program about, let's call it becoming world-class as a change worker. I'm not going to say you're going to be world-class at the end of it, but setting you on that journey of becoming world-class as a change worker. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Look forward to speaking to you again soon in the future.